Hi, I'm Denise Applegate Schilbert, and I'm one of the training specialists with Baby Lock. We're excited to present the newest update for the Baby Lock Pro Stitcher Premium. Some great features that I know you're going to enjoy, along with things that you've asked for. You can download this version and put on your tablet with your Pro Stitcher and have the ability to do a simulator without a license code. So this is where you download your simulator, which is just a version of the Pro Stitcher. Keep in mind, the designs do not come with the simulator. So if you want the designs, you'll need to either take them off your USB stick or download from your Pro Stitcher Premium on your machine. And so I wanted to show you that because that's really important where to find that information. Now I'm on the Pro Stitcher and let's talk about those new features that we have with this update. One of the things is I'm going to go up here and show you that the I in the top right hand corner. It used to be a question mark, but now it's an I. If you click on that, you still have your help menu. If I click on this, this is the full user's guide for the Pro Stitcher Premium. And then right beside that is the about. So this update is 00.00.2374. That's the update that I've just uploaded onto my tablet, and I'm pretty excited about these features. Now, right beside the I in the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to go to the setting pages. And underneath the settings, you have a few things. One is a new button on our ribbon, which is the second row of icons across the top. Opti Stitch, it's an optimal stitching. If I click on that, it turns green and over on the right hand side you can see that we can customize these so acceleration if you are going to stitch this block that I have on the screen you've got a lot of points and a lot of in and out in those corners and you may find that you have to slow your acceleration down because of this you you know want to avoid those little jump stitches that you might get when you're turning the corner in a point so the acceleration can now be adjusted maybe your speed you're going to do micro quilting or very small quilting and your speed you also want to optimize that this is going to help the machine and the pro stitcher work together to calculate the best optimal speed for you to move at. Now keep in mind, you can manually change these. That's available just by clicking on this customize button here, this green. But as soon as I deselect that, you can see that your acceleration default setting was 40 and the speed percent was 100. But right beside on the top left hand side by that Opti stitch, you can put things back to your default setting. So, you can change them and you can put them back. So that's pretty exciting and pretty easy to get to too. Now, the other thing to know is that we have a few other features that you're not gonna wanna miss out on. And one is I base. So when I put my back and my batting on the frame and then I'm going to put the top on, I usually use a basting stitch. Now I don't like a real small basting stitch, but I like to use a basting stitch so that I can get to um, putting that down without having to rip it out if it wasn't quite where I wanted it. And so that becomes very important. So on that same ribbon bar at the top, the second row there, I can click stitches per inch. And notice on the sidebar on the right hand side, I have that basting stitch and I've clicked on it because I've been playing with it and it's green. And what that allows me to do is to take my basting stitches up or down. I like about a half inch basting stitch depending on what I'm doing. And that's a nice feature to have. Now with that, if you didn't know, your left hand side of your screen is customizable. In order to get to that, you're going to want to do a couple things. One is we're gonna go to display and on display, you can see that you have things over here on the left hand side. We have our um, undo and redo. Well, I always want those there. I love my horizontal there and my vertical, but I personally don't use the follow or the bounds very much. 
So I'm going to go to Assign over here on the sidebar on the right hand side. I'm going to go down to the Follow and I'm going to click the little tiny arrow under Follow which opens up all of the icons that I can put on the left hand side. And notice that new icon there is Based. So I'm going to change my Follow to Based. Then I go up and I click on Display and it is now set that follow to base. That's really exciting to me. I like the ability to have that right at my fingertips. So now I can change it on the fly without needing to go to my regalia screen. Pretty cool. Now the next thing we have is we have the ability to um, do motor locking automatically. And it's pretty funny because things we ask for, I'm like, oh, if we could just have this. So we ask, and guess what? You ask for this, and because you ask for it, we now have it. So underneath setting and advanced here, right in the middle of the screen on the ribbon, we have a few things to choose from. Well, one, general. There's a few things under general, but notice on the sidebar on the right-hand side, we have keep motors locked or unlocked. Well, you know what? I would like mine up unlocked so that when I'm at an end of a design the motor will no longer be locked and I need to remember to unlock it and I know I have moved the machine without thinking about oh the motor is locked and then it's like oh I can't believe I just did that so now I'm going to leave my motors unlocked at the end of that design it'll be a great feature for me to have and not have to worry about so I'm pretty excited about that and then the other thing is that if you go to um, a couple other features that we have that you've asked for, or, you know, I've met people and they're like, oh, could we have this? Or why do we have this? This is going to help you for some of the start and restart. So um, often a question is about the new start and end point. So I've ran out of bobbin thread or heaven forbid my thread on the top broke. Well now what we have is um, called design point. So I'm going to go up on the top to view. And underneath view, notice that far right hand icon on the ribbon is design points. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but on each of those points of this little star here, there's a node. And a node is what the design is made up of. And with straight lines, a design isn't made up with a lot of nodes. It doesn't need a lot. It only needs one at the point to make a straight line. So when you go to new start and end point, what happens is it jumps to the closest node that you're at. And so often it will go right to that point. Well now we can see those nodes on the straight lines especially and know exactly which end it's going to go to. So seeing the nodes is really important for me if my bobbin thread breaks out or something inevitable as I call it happens. Now the other thing to know is that the some of the tabs that we use every day, so I'm going to go to file and modify and some of the tabs that we use every day have changed. You'll need to have a design on your screen to be able to see this. So I have a design but it wasn't selected and the first thing I'm going to show you is the rotate and under rotate those lines have been added between reset, the 45, the flip, the mirror, the two point, the end point. So a line has been added to let you know that you have different things that you can do there individually. So that's kind of nice to know that those are there. And then under modify we also have a line. And a line I'm going to make an area. And you've got to have an area to be able to do this. So let me do an area that's a let's just say six inch space. So now I have an area and there's my six inch space. So I have my design and I have my area. And when we go back to modify and we go to align on the right hand sidebar, some things have changed. Our center button, which we've thought should be separated from the stretch and the other things, is now at the top beside no align. So if I touch that center icon, what's going to happen is it's going to take the exact design the way that it is and center it. 
And so that's a nice feature to have separate from everything else. And the great thing is now we have our horizontal as a left to right horizontal bar, our vertical is an up and down bar, and the stretch has changed to be right beside the vertical. So that makes it really, really nice. Then we also have, if we were to repeat, so I'm going to change the design, clear all, I'm going to make another new area. This time I'm going to make the area 20 by 20, just to have an area on my screen, because if you try this, you do need an area to be able to do this. So I have an area on my screen. I'm going to take an edge to edge design. So we'll go to continuous lines. I'm going to take these leaves. I'm going to shut off the view of my design points. We don't need that on for what we're doing here. And I'm going to go to repeat and I'm going to repeat the design across and notice the point to point right underneath that arrow that I'm clicking right here it now has a box around it so it looks like you're supposed to click on it it didn't have that box around it before so it was sometimes confusing I'm going to click the point to point and now I'm going to add vertical and then at this point when I go to fit it's not there anymore. Fit's gone, but it has fill. So the fill and the stretch, okay, those have changed a little bit. The fill is really a more uh, correct word to use than fit. So that has also changed. So what I'd like you to do is install that new update, play with the new features, and as always, Happy quilting.